What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and just as expected, Apple has released the first beta of iOS 15.6 to registered developers just a few days after launching iOS 15.5 to the general public. And in addition to this iOS release, we also got the first beta of iPadOS 15.6, tvOS 15.6, HomePod OS 15.6, watchOS 8.7, and macOS Monterey 12.5. But as always, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 15.6 and what is new in the software. So let's start off with the size of this update. So you can see here, the size came in at about 5.4 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max coming from version 15.5. So anytime you go from a beta to a final or a final to a beta, that size is going to be very large. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update. Let's go to our settings, general about 15.6. We can see the new build number there is 19G5027E. So we have an E at the end of the build number there, which indicates we'll see at least a few betas before the final release. And if we scroll down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that's actually gone backwards and went from 1.61 to 1.60. Dot zero zero. And of course, keep in mind that the modem firmware could be different for you. It does vary depending on your carrier. All right, so now what's new here in 15.6 beta one? And as you guys know, iOS 15.4 was a huge update. We got a ton of new features, then 15.5 came, and we got a few new features, but it was mainly bug fixes. And now with 15.6, we're gonna see even fewer new features and changes on the front end. Most of those changes are going to be on the back end, whether that's in the code, whether that's bug fixes, whether that's security enhancements, you're not going to see much on the front end with iOS 15.6. So keep that in mind. And that's because, you know, iOS 16 beta one is right around the corner. Apple is saving a lot of new features and changes for that iOS 16 update. So just keep that in mind. Now we do have some changes in the code referencing a few new accessibility options. So we have one for hide emoji search. We have a web rotor summary change and also a couple of other options have been added or changed in the code. There's also some smart home accessory pairing changes in the verbiage. So like these setting strings have been changed as well. But again, that's all on the back end in the code, not anything you could see on the front end. And speaking of accessibility, Apple did also just reveal new features coming later this year to the iPhone and Apple Watch related to accessibility. I will be talking about these in a separate video, but Apple seems to be making a big, big push towards accessibility features this year more than any other year it seems. This update also fixes a bug relating to the keyboard using voiceover. So if you had any issues with voiceover specifically about the keyboard, then that could very well be fixed for you here in 15.6 beta one. Some people had issues with that on 15.5 and they've since told me that it has been fixed with this update. And then also I wanted to mention this alert right here because I mentioned this in my 15.5 coverage. I mentioned this in the betas ever since it came about. And at one point I thought it was a bug, but now it appears to be a feature. So it's not a bug where you get this, where it says automations will run once your iPhone is unlocked. So the thing I found annoying about this and the reason I thought it was a bug is because that would always pop up after I've already unlocked my device. So it didn't really make sense. It was counterintuitive and it was just a wasted notification. And of course, as you guys know, you can't really turn off notifications fully for the shortcuts application. And I'm still not seeing the new Apple account card, which is going to be the replacement or the rebranding of the iTunes pass. This was in the code of iOS 15.5, but I did not see it in 15.5 and I still don't see any sign of it here in 15.6. So I'm guessing that's going to be more of a server side push. I was going to push that out server side after updating to 15.5. Like you'll only be able to see it if you're on 15.5 or above. And then just like with the Apple account card, there's also also no sign of the Apple classical application. So apparently that's supposed to be its own separate application, but there's no sign of it here on version 15.6, at least not in the first beta. And then if we look at the release notes for this build, you can see here, there's only one thing mentioned overall, only one thing, and it's related to Xcode. It's a known issue and it says Xcode 13.4 is unable to prepare iOS 15.6 beta devices for development. And the workaround is just to use the previous version. Xcode 13.3.1. So that is the only thing mentioned here in the release notes. I'm sure we'll see more in the coming betas, but that's everything mentioned so far. Now, as far as the performance goes, this build is actually a little bit sluggish compared to previous builds. And I've not said that about a beta in a while now, but this first beta actually feels like it has a decrease 
in performance. It just feels overall just more sluggish. I don't know when I go in and out of applications, when I'm multitasking, loading games even took a little bit longer than I remember. So performance is not the greatest here in beta one. And it's not too surprising, I guess, since it is a first beta, but still on a 15.6, you wouldn't expect it to be, you know, much worse than 15.5, but I've noticed it's not the greatest. And you can see here, these are the Geekbench scores I got. So I got a 1735 on the single core and a 4761 on the multi-core. And I didn't run this test until I rebooted my device and made sure it was at, you know, a cool temperature. So it's not like I ran this right after installing the software so the scores not the greatest it's not the worst of course but you can see they're compared to 15.5 we had a 1740 and a 4793 so slightly lower there on 15.6 beta 1. now as far as the battery life goes it's too early to tell if battery life is better or worse than it was on 15.5 but if the performance is any indicator then the battery life might also take a slight hit here and at this first beta of course that is going to be temporary i'm sure it will get better throughout the beta stages but so far again Again, too early to tell. I will let you guys know if it's better or worse in my follow-up video coming on Saturday, the new Apple Weekly episode. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is most likely going to be iOS 15.6 beta 2 and if history is any indication apple is most likely going to skip next week and not release a beta 2 until the week of may 30th which of course will go in to june if it's not released on may 31st but if apple's going to do exactly two weeks we could see that second beta right there on june 1st but really anytime from june 3rd or may 30th until june 1st will be my prediction for beta 2. now if apple has a ton of betas in store for 15.6 then we could see it next week but usually apple skips a week you know when it goes from beta 1 to beta 2. so we'll have to wait and see and then i do also think an ios 15.5.1 is very possible within the next few weeks if Apple does deem that necessary. So if Apple finds any new security vulnerabilities that have been actively exploited or any type of bug, you know, that's important and affects a lot of users, Apple will go ahead and release a 15.5.1. But you know, that's only going to happen probably within the next two to three weeks, if at all. Otherwise, Apple's just going to wait until 15.6 gets released, which is looking like it's going to be most likely at the end of June. And then of course, speaking of June, June 6th is going to be when we see iOS 16 beta 1. I will be live streaming that first day of the Worldwide Developers Conference here on my channel. I will also go ahead and download iOS 16 beta 1 in that video and show you guys all the new features and changes before any videos go up on YouTube. So you guys will get kind of a sneak peek, a first look at those features. And you guys will also get to help me discover new features in iOS 16. It's always a fun stream. So make sure you guys are there on June 6th right here on my YouTube channel. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a minor one, but of course I like to keep you guys updated no matter how big or small the update is. I'm going to bring you the videos to let you know it has been released. So if you appreciate that and you enjoyed them, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for more iOS 15 and iOS 16 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.